Hi, this is Katie Halbert. I'm the horn player of the Wild Parade Wing Quintet, and this is my final video for my week of quick fixes on the horn. So my first two videos, we uh, talked about the importance of embouchure and air and how those two elements can help us be better at slurring and also help improve our low range. So today we're going to go in the opposite direction and talk about how our embouchure and air can help us in the high range of the horn. So. As you uh, saw in Wednesday's video, uh, the low register of the horn is at least two octaves. It's extremely low. As we go higher, um, we actually can go to the high C above the staff. And even though it seems like that could be a challenging, uh, challenging range, as long as we're focusing on our embouchure and our air and we're using them effectively, it actually can be at least a little bit easier and a little bit more attainable. So let's talk about what we need to do. So as we're going into the higher range of the instrument, always remembering that when we play the horn, our natural vowel sound is an ah or an o. Oh. Um, and when you say either of those vowel sounds, notice that your tongue feels very relaxed in the mouth, ah. Oh. It kind of sits in the middle, it's very relaxed. If you think about changing that vowel sound to an e, what do you notice happens with your tongue? O oh, and e. You should notice that your tongue goes from being relatively relaxed to all of a sudden arcing just a little bit. And why is this important? Well, as we talk about our airstream, everyone always says, well, your airstream needs to be faster as you're going higher. Um, and that's absolutely true. You need faster air to go through the buzz to make the buzz um, frequency uh, faster. And that helps us get these higher notes. Um, but if we think more in simple terms and think about this change in vowel sound, when you arc your tongue, it actually helps speed up your air um, <clears throat> without, even, without even thinking about it. In the same type of way that when you place your thumb over a hose nozzle, um, the, the water shoots out faster than when it's not there. So what I like to do with my students is we like to do really messy horn rips in order to get us up into the higher range, just like this. <laughs> And fun rips like that are not only just fun because they are very Hollywood horn sound, but because it also shows that if you get all those little notes between the octave, it shows that you're doing the right thing with your embouchure and your air. And the big thing that we want to make sure that we're thinking about with our embouchure is that we want to make sure that the embouchure doesn't ever feel like it's seized up and, and that would equal that the buzz stops. <laughs> Notice that there was kind of like a moment of gripping. That's me trying to bring my embouchure really close together all, all of a sudden. And then also notice that you saw a lot of tension in my neck because it really does. What it does is it kind of cuts off my airstream and all of a sudden it kind of just feels, um, it feels very tense um, for lack of a better word. So if you're doing this correctly, it should feel very relaxed. And that's why we get all those nice notes in between. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on that middle C and we're going to do octave rips and we're just going to move up by half step. So we're going to go from C to C sharp to D, etc. So just follow along. And what we're going to also make sure that we start thinking about is as you go higher, thinking about your oh, -y -oh with your tongue, okay, to help with our airspeed. And then also trying to start thinking about our embouchure going from our nice steady pucker to all of a sudden bringing everything in just a little bit more. So thinking a lot about pulling your chin down, which helps pull your corners together. Remembering that as horn players, our embouchure cannot compress up and down. It compresses from side to side. Okay, so let's give this a try. <laughs> you're noticing is that I'm not utilizing my thumb valve at all even though we typically use our thumb as we're going higher on the horn 
And the only reason I'm not doing that, first of all, is so I don't have to worry about a valve change in the middle of that rip, but also because it's actually harder to play high on just the F side of the horn. So in some ways, I'm actually making my warm up a little bit more challenging so that when I go to practically apply my thumb in my um, etudes and solos, that it feels a lot easier for me. So now we're at F, which is at the top of our staff. So now let's try going a little bit higher. <laughs> So notice as I'm going up that there's no tension in my neck. I'm not in any way feeling like I'm overexerting any power because all I'm focusing on is my embouchure and my airstream. And if you feel like you're hitting a wall as you're going higher, try to assess are you putting pressure on your top lip? And that's something that we have to be careful of because the moment you start putting mouthpiece pressure, especially on the top lip, it really will stop the vibration. And once that vibration stops, you physically are forcing yourself to try to make the horn play, but we have to make sure that we're keeping the embouchure actually pretty relaxed and making sure that if any pressure, it's only on the bottom lip, which is really where we should feel like we're anchoring our mouthpiece anyways. So I hope today's lesson on high horn playing was beneficial, and I hope that you were able to take something away from at least one of these videos this week, uh, focusing on our embouchure and our airstream. So please stay tuned for next week as our bassoon player Sean takes over and please continue to follow us on social media. Uh, we have lots of fun things coming up this fall. Thanks for tuning in.